What's up, guys? It's your boy Showtime Doctor. I'm back with the Cowley Guide here. Uh, Cowley Character Guide, not a Cowley Dungeon Guide. Obviously not in season. So I'm a little sick, so excuse me if I have to, like, blow my nose or get water. It's just, but I'm mostly over it. It's just, you know, it's in its last throes. Anyways, it's not what you came for, so let's get to it. So Cowley... If you manage to bag yourself a Cali, congratulations. If perhaps, you know, in a month or two, if you're watching this video from when I made it and you just got your Cali, hey, congratulations again. But I am going to show you, maybe you don't have a Cali, you just want to see why she's good. I'm going to show you why Cali is so ridiculous, why she's crazy strong when DPS and she can be good for PvP or PvE. This is my first... Basically almost exclusive PvP character as far as talents and stuff go. I still use her in PvE. She's good in Tayo dungeons. Doesn't need the DPS upgrade for the most part. But anyways, let's get into it here. So, uh, her leadership increased wind allies attack by 40%. That's good if you're not running a full wind team. If you run a full wind team, you want to run Ruby because she gives you 60% attack. But otherwise, if you have majority wind characters, as I will when I do an advent later on, uh, her leadership's pretty solid there. So her passive starts with Moon Shadow, hides the caster for a turn at the start of the wave. So she starts in stealth. 50% chance to cast hide for a turn when using skills. So pretty much every other time she uses a skill, law of averages, she's going to go into stealth. If you have multi, let's say that she goes into stealth the first turn. Uh, she can't be countered because she's in stealth and she's going to hit the second turn and still be in stealth. That's pretty gnarly. Uh, and then also she poisons three enemies for 30% of her attack for two turns if she's hiding at the start of the turn. So usually as long as she's not hiding or as long as she doesn't get flushed out by an AoE at the beginning of like a wave, she's going to throw three poison on three enemies. Throwing poison out that easily, especially on three enemies, is actually super strong in this game because poison's very... Uh, it stops healing and it takes for, you know, 30% of her attack. But also, it is a debuff that is not very easy to keep up normally. But in this case, you know, you get free for two turns, and then assume she goes into stealth again, she'll throw it out again. So it's pretty gnarly. Under 60, activates resolve upon taking fatal damage. 100% HP, as long as she doesn't have a debuff up that stops healing. 100% of her HP, so that is super strong. So basically, you gotta go through her whole health bar again. As you see, she doesn't have a ton of health, but that definitely adds to her mitigation. She also blinds all enemies for a turn, so if you're in PvP especially, give you a little bit more mitigation there. Blind is, I believe, about a 40% accuracy debuff in this game. Uh, that's once per battle, and then inflicts 40% additional damage when attacking a target of damage over time, or that is affected by damage over time. Once again, her passive, once she still throws poison on people. And then she also does more damage over time. I'll show you that in a bit here. So on her one, Shadow Dagger. It's your basic one target for 100%, but it has a 35% chance to put Brand up for 30%. Uh, brand, for those who don't know, you basically take 30% more damage from everything as long as it's on you. It's really nasty in her dungeon, actually. But also a very good debuff, especially if you have a burst target. Go ahead and just snag that Brand on them and then blow everything. Also, if she's hidden... When she does her one, decreases target's buff duration by one turn. Uh, that is very good, especially in this dungeon. I'm going to show you later. But pretty much you can take buff duration down. Then as you skill it up, you know, the base damage goes up and the chance to get brand on goes up until you get the 60, 160. So pretty gnarly for a one. On her two, inflicts damage equal to 200% of attack to one enemy. 35% chance to cause bleeding for 30% of attack for two turns. So that is another dot, if you remember... Inflicts 40% additional damage when attacking a target affected by damage over time. Though she also puts up bleed here. So that's pretty gnarly. And then if she's hidden, inflicts damage equal to 30% of attack to two additional enemies. And causes them to bleed for 30% of attack for two turns if the caster's hidden. So it doesn't do a ton of damage, but it also puts up more bleeds. So the more debuffs you have up, the better. And not to mention she's doing more damage. So that's pretty gnarly. Uh, the two targets are... She has her primary target, and then the, the other two targets are random. So you never know who she's going to really target. And then on her three, inflicts penetration damage equal to 360% of attack for one enemy. 
16% additional damage. Oh, I forgot. I skilled that up a bit. Let me go to the original. So it's actually 300% and then 10% additional damage when attacking an attack type enemy. So like a ruby or a cane, etc. Increases caster's attack by 40% for one turn if the attack kills the target. So you kill somebody, her attack goes up even higher. Gets pretty gnarly. And then as you skill that up, the base percentage as well as the additional damage on attack types goes up. This is what I've chosen to skill up. And eventually you're going to get the 480 and 35. So pretty freaking gnarly. And that attack buff will last two turns versus one. On a six turn cooldown. This is on a three turn cooldown, so it's pretty strong overall. So, uh, for skill recommendations, since she's pretty strong PvP here, I recommend getting her ult up immediately just because you want to dome attack types as much as possible. And the harder this hits, the better chance you're going to get that buff. And then she'll just keep hitting harder and harder. And then I would actually recommend getting her two up after that just because it'll eventually get the 320. And then you know, have a higher chance to do bleeds. And then eventually inflicts damage will go, the extra damage will go to 100% versus 30% what it is at the beginning. So that was pretty gnarly right there. And the uh, bleed turns into a three turn debuff rather than a two turn debuff. And then you know her one. So you can eventually have more chance to put Brand up and do more damage. Because your one is always the skill that uh, you multi and you counter with. So right here. Uh, she's not necessarily where I want her to be either. I give her a little bit of everything right now. I need to redo her runes. But what I would like to do. Uh, basically work up her attack percentage as much as possible. And you know a little bit of crit strike chance. Maybe a little less than this honestly. And then get her multi-strike and counter up a little bit, hopefully to like 20%. But as I get more purple stars and stuff on her, that stuff will go up naturally. She has a little bit of HP recovery, that's just, it happened to be on a rune. Try to get her health up, because the higher her health is, the higher her resolve is going to heal her for to full health. Runes I'm running on her. You see that 20% attack, which is always nice for most uh, attack types. I've also chosen to run the Rune of Burst. Now the Rune of Burst inflicts... 20% additional damage if the target has a continuous damage effect, so essentially a dot. If you remember, inflicts 40% additional damage when attacking the target of a, a dot. So basically, this is 40, and the rune gives her another 20%. So she is doing 60% more damage to anyone that has a dot. Now when you combine that with, if she killed someone with her ult, that's 40% more damage. If Brand happens to be up, that's 30% more damage. And that's not even counting buffs from other sources, so... It can get pretty ridiculous. <sighs> so, this right here, I kind of give her a little mishmash of runes. Try to give her a little bit of strike, a little bit of damage. That's the HP recovery that's just there because it's on the rune of burst. And then counter attack, you know, not bad. Multi and counter are actually fairly good on her because if she is exposed or she gets hit by a, an AoE when she's in stealth, uh, if she counters, she has a chance to go right back into stealth and completely screw that. So, as you see, I'm trying to focus attack as much as possible, but with the amount of runes I had left, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't feasible. Now, uh, Cowley is my first full-time PvP unit, so I have uh, talented her as such. So, crit strike chance, more attack... Decreased damage taken in arena, increased damage dealt in arena, defense here. <clears throat> um, you know, this, if you really want it, I just want to give her some defense because she's so squishy. The, the only issue with this is, and obviously I need to get these to three stars, is when you take percentage defense on a character with low defense and you're not running like defense runes on them, the amount of defense this gives you is less than versus, like, say, a tanky support, etc. Or even someone with, like, a two-set defensive bonus. So, I'm kind of tempted just to be like, screw it, and give her this extra crit strike chance, but <coughs> I'll think about it. Because she's there to kill, you know, she's not there to survive, per se. <coughs> so, your Kali... Um, the things that are going to screw up Kali... AoEs, if you're fighting against like an Aemon or uh, Electra, 
or anyone that has like a five target AOE, it's gonna flush her out of stealth and she deals significantly less damage while stealth. Not to mention she becomes the target of more things. So your hard counters against her, someone like a Cynthia that can silence her and is her counter element. Morgan hits her pretty hard. Anyone fire that can hit her hard. But in general, she can get hit pretty hard. So you're trying to keep her in stealth as much and keep her protected as much as possible, so. And as far as your purple stars go, you see I've gotten her to three. You know, your first one's going to give defense and accuracy, both good. She's a hybrid, by the way, so actually it's attack, attack speed, which is good. Defense accuracy, you know, pretty good. Some health and then additional attack damage to attack types. She specializes in killing attack types, so that's pretty cool. On your fourth, a little bit more defense and increase her damage on her one. That's pretty gnarly. More health, more damage to supports. And then the six star is the best one, of course, on your hybrids and your DPSs, attack and crit damage. <clears throat> so all the purple stars are recommended for her. So now uh, I'll take her out, but before I do that, I'm going to go over potential synergies with her. So let me actually get to the screen, then we'll go do it. So I'm going to run my Aemon, so in this case I'm actually going to switch her to the leadership role, especially since she's the focus. But pretty much wind heroes, you know, so... She's given additional attack to win heroes, so clearly win heroes will be good with her. Um, as far as characters that help protect her, Ian actually protects her really well with his two-turn uh, two-turn protection proc that procs at the beginning of his turn. Uh, potentially, you can also run her with. I remember who had the wind and the. Alright, let me go back to my heroes quick. I remember there's a hero that buffs both wind and light. Christian. Yeah, okay, so Christian increases critical strike chance. So you can consider running them together because Christian's also throwing out little passive heals on top of being a significant DPS himself. So running him in dungeons, he's actually very popular in PvE dungeons as well because of his base damage and his basic 100% piercing. So Christian's a good character to run it with too. But anyways, let's get back to the dungeon. And then I'll showcase Cowley in this dungeon, guys. So I might talk a little bit about other stuff, but for the most part it's going to be the craziness Cowley does. Yeah. Hope you guys are all doing well today. Alright, so this first guy. Callie can put poison on him. And I am still not sure if poison can possibly prevent his uh you call it his resolve. It doesn't prevent it, but it'll prevent the healing. It does it for us, but I've had poison on him. Like, poison just got up on him right there. And it hasn't. So I don't know if that is some type of... Like, it's calculated differently for us versus... For player characters versus, uh... You know, NPC characters. But we'll see. You see that's ticking pretty hard there. Alright, so now Kali's hidden again, so this is gonna put up... Well, if there was multiple targets, it would've put up bleed. But you see that's pretty good damage there. He resisted the bleed, unfortunately. Or maybe not resist, just the proc didn't go off. So now, since this guy's at half, I'm gonna go ahead and engraving him. He should pretty much... Destroy his own revive. So the cool thing is, we'll get the tested here, because Cowley's going to go before him and hopefully throw the poison on him. See if it affects the resolve or not. So there's the poison. The attack. Now he's going to ult. 
And you see that? He still recovered. So I don't understand that. It's almost like he cleanses before he, uh... He gets the revive. Because poison prevents re uh, resolves on us. Like, especially in Cali's dungeon. Because, you know, his poison's pretty prevalent there. But... For whatever reason, it doesn't work here. And I don't agree with that. But maybe this character's kit works that way. I'm not that familiar with Howard's kit. But either way, we did a significant amount of damage. You can cheese that right about 50% is when he ults the first time. You can cheese that with uh, Engraving of Destruction. So, Callie hasn't been in stealth for two turns, so she's not doing the additional proc stuff that she normally does. <clears throat> DC on her one. And keep in mind, I've only skilled up her three twice. Uh, I got a couple more copies. I'm still ticked off about that Cali dungeon. Because uh, I killed Cali 15 times the last two days. I got one copy. All I needed was two copies to skill up her ult all the way. That still kind of cheeses me, but oh well. I'll be ready for her next time she comes back. My tank is way better. Here's your boy Ronan, Mr. Gah! Gah! Turn it up so you guys can hear that go. There we go, baby. <laughs> I hope that didn't hurt anyone's ears. I'm sorry about that if I did. Back down. So once again, what I'm going to try to do is do that same poison thing on Ronin before his, uh, his resolve goes off. See if that works out or not. And then if it doesn't work on him as well, as far as stopping his resolve from healing, then I'm just going to have to assume enemies calculate their resolves differently than you know, us normal or normal characters. I need Kali to get back into stealth, so I might have to slow DPS down here. She's in stealth. So what am I do? Try not to kill this guy, but I'll bring him down a bit more and hopefully I'll get like a big evade or something dumb. Try to ruby killing. Actually, you know what? Alright, so poison's on him, so we're gonna go for a kill. Of course he dodges. It yeah, looks like I might have to get poison on him again. <laughs> After I res her. Not going to stealth. I might not be able to get this, guys. I apologize for that. That's just RNG sometimes. <clears throat> yep, we got a big counter. Oh, well, if anyone could test that, let me know. Or if you can test on another resolve hero and see if it stops it or not. That would be good to know. Of course, now that I'm not trying, she goes in the stealth. Big bird kill! Wow! I 
that title. Almost as cool as your hair, bro. Reset that capture angle, I think that's dumb. Alright, let's raise this kid. We can get through this a little faster. So right now, Tyo's an attack type, so this is gonna hit him harder. Than it normally would. He also got that poison on him already. <sighs> but the poison's gonna be really significant for any hero that heals themselves. PvP or PvE. Once you do get yourself a Cowley and you can just throw out poisons like crazy, it's pretty gnarly. <clears throat> but you see how much faster this is going with a damage... A team that has a damage leadership. Versus how my old runs in this dungeon used to be. And you see how much more aggressive I am too, now that I have a better tank. There's a hide proc there from Kelly. Now she's gearing up to do, as long as she doesn't get flushed out. She's gearing up to do poison damage her next turn. There it is, that additional damage. I really should give Ruby some love. And oh well. She's in the sacrificial lamb spot right next to the tank. Oh man, dude. That was right before that turn. That's... When Tayo hits half in this admin dungeon, he does his ult for the first time. And unlike our version, his ult does a cone effect <laughs> in this dungeon. Can you imagine if it did a cone effect in, uh, you know, that we could use him with? It would be so freaking stupid OP. Already really good, too. Oops, I meant to hit his two. Seem like she's getting any bleed procs this run. Damon's voice actor always cracks me up. <laughs> it's funny when you play enough video games or you watch enough anime, you start to kind of recognize a lot of the voices. I forget, there's one of the characters in this game that has, uh... I forget the guy from Attack on Titan. Aaron has his voice actor. <laughs> now, I'm not a big Aaron fan, so... Alright, so... Your girl Ruby's days are numbered now. Callie's plenty of DPS to finish this guy. And keep in mind, guys, this is Cali PvP spec. So, she could be doing more damage in here if I wanted her to, but I don't really need her to. Follow up there. We got almost every proc except. Oh, actually, we did. We got bleed, we got brand, and we got poison. See how quickly we're going through his health here. <clears throat> so, pretty much no issues. What am I way to turn? We'll finish this off right. Visual effects. <laughs> Oh, 
Alt. There we go. Big Cali alt. Let's do it, baby. Ninja women, by the way, are probably my favorite trope in all like media, anime, etc. Look at that damage. So that's your girl Callie. She's ridiculous. And if you if you're at the point in the game where you can get her, because she is the hardest admin dungeon in this game right now. Uh the sky's the limit, man, depending on how many copies of her you get. Look out that damage. Now granted, Ruby's not as built, and uh because Ruby can do good damage in here too, but she's not as built and she was dead for part of that second phase there. But overall, you see she tanks her fair amount of damage too. <clears throat> That's how Callie works in a nutshell, guys. So I hope this was informative to you guys, and if you don't have Callie, maybe it'll uh, potentially help you counter her if you run into her in a PvP arena or when you're doing her dungeon. I do have a Callie dungeon guide up, so along with a kill video as well. Is the guide I put up before I killed her because a patch took the servers down, but I got her to her resolve, so that was kind of heartbreaking. But I wanted to release the guide so that more people had chances to kill her. But anyways, guys, this has been your Cowley Advent. Not Advent. <laughs> your Cowley Hero Guide. Let me know your experiences with her. And I have Showtime DR. You can find me on Twitch. You got my YouTube. Click the show notes. Uh, there is a link to my Discord. You could come in, share your experiences, you know, ask questions, what have you. I will catch you guys later. Showtime, Doctor. Have a great day, guys. Farm hard. Peace.